Welcome to DNA Star Lab Views. I'm Katie Maxfield, and I'm here today with Dr. Robab Katani, a postdoctoral researcher at Penn State University. Thanks for joining us today, Dr. Katani. Thank you for having me. To start off, can you tell us a little bit about your work with E. coli and specifically uh, explain what the super shredder strains are that you work with? Sure. So, um, sugar toxin producing E. coli are major foodborne pathogens and they are typically um, carried by cattle. Cattle are the main reservoir of O157, H7. And um, they are typically, they, uh, the pathogen typically colonizes the rectal anal junction uh, of the cattle. Um, so the super shedder E. coli, well, let me back off. Typically, cattle um, excrete um, 10 to 100 uh, CFU of E. coli per gram of feces. Uh, super shedders are defined as uh, excreting 10 to the power of 4 equal to 10 to the power of 4 or more uh, per gram of feces. So you can imagine at that high powers the implication um, of being excreted at that uh, total amount uh, into the environment. And so what is the biological or epidemiological significance of these strains? Um, so um, the mechanism of adherence and colonization of E. coli 015787 um, at the RAJ, which is the uh, abbreviation for rectal anal junction, um, that um, we decided to study that um, because um, we are uh, concerned about uh, the impl implication of um, shedding a high amount of um, E. coli cells um, to the environment, to the farm, uh, which uh, basically the transmission within the cattle and also uh, ultimately is going to go to our food supply. Um, and that's, um, that's what we have set our experiment uh, and our research to do that. And so what, what are the biggest questions that you're trying to answer right now? Um, so, in doing that, we decided, so there are three factors that are involved in super shedding. Uh, there are environmental factors, there are microbial factors, and um, there are host factors uh, that could lead to super shedding. Um, we have um, emphasized and focused on the microbial factor that uh, could be leading to the super shedding. So, um, in order to do that, we consider two uh, different strains of super shedder, uh, which are E. coli that came from the cattle that were considered super shedders. Um, so the CFU were higher, that came to the power of six. Um, and we decided to sequence them, fully sequence them, um, the genome, to see if there are any uh, genomic basis um, to this super shedding phenomenon. Um, so, um, as far as uh, challenges, um, there are five other uh, 015787 that have been fully sequenced and have been submitted to NCBI. Um, unfortunately, at the time of sequencing, uh, we didn't know it was not available, um, evaluated if these were super shedder strains or not. So, we don't have a um, reference a non super shedder reference uh, to compare that with. However, we have done whole genome uh, analysis of all strains with the already existing ones on uh, in, in CBI, and we see that our um, super shedder strains have close homology uh, to the um, strains that were from the spinach outbreaks, um, specifically TW14359 and also EC4115. Um, in the analysis. And, and so speaking of the analysis, how has DNA star software fit into that workflow? Yes, yeah, so um, I use the engine um, to assemble the reads um, uh, for the sequencing for both SS17 and SS52. Um, then I use the Sigman uh, to kind of get the contents and the scaffolds and put everything together. Um, and then also edit seek I, I used um, to get the sequences um, and seek builder to design primers to close the gaps 
And uh, at the end, uh, my close uh, circle, I use GenVision uh, to create the circles for publication. So I would say I probably use uh, every aspect of the uh, laser gene suite uh, to get this project going. Well, that's great. And, and so what, uh, what would you say is your favorite aspect of the software? Besides the gen vision that gives me a pretty picture, <laughs> I would say Sigma. Definitely um, for the assembly, after the initial assembly, putting the um, short list together, um, I use that a lot. Um, and also, I must say the technical support um, have been extremely useful, helpful. Every time I call, there's somebody, they have walked me through every step. Um, they've asked me to send them anything I have, if I, I can make up some sense of something. So it's been a great experience, wonderful experience. I think I worked with DNA Store for now, close to eight years now. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's great to hear, and we're glad to, to be able to help you. Right. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Um, well, um, I guess, um, again, the technical support's been great. Um, and also, I'm going to continue using that. And um, we actually started the whole group here at Penn State um, that we kind of supporters of the Indian Star and uh, we help each other out. Um, so it's been a wonderful experience. And uh, as I mentioned, we are starting several other projects. And uh, we will definitely continue using that and continue being uh, supporters of this wonderful um, software. And I'm happy, very happy with it. Well, excellent. I'm glad to hear that, and I look forward to uh, learning more about your research as you continue to discover more about these super shutter strains. Thank you. Thank you very much. To see more interviews with DNA Star users, please visit our website, dnastar.com. And to have your work featured on DNA Star Lab Views, contact us at dnastar-info at dnastar.com.